if you want to search my videos, one of the best ways we found to search and get a good selection of my videos is just type in Holding Firmly and Mike Deserio, and you'll get uh, a good selection of those videos doing that on, uh, it's going to YouTube, just click on Google and then YouTube, type in Holding Firmly and then space Mike Deserio, and you'll get uh, a lot of my selection of my videos if you're interested. What I want to do here is go over again about the beastly image that's been created in the churches today that represents Christ but is far, far from it. Of course, in Revelation 13, we see the, this beast and this image and the mark and, and all that stuff that they hype up and make a lot of money out of today that they have no discernment or understanding of whatsoever. Uh, in verses 11 and then in verse 14, it says in verse 11 that he had two horns like a lamb, but spoke the language of the dragon, but spoke like a dragon. I, I added the language of a dragon. And then in verse 14, it talks about, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth. Now, this is the key, that is the people are deceived. See, because the, as the foundations of our society are crumbling at the seams, the political and the religious leaders that dwell in their high places of perversion and idolatry and corruption, they just don't seem to really get what's going on. They'll, they think they'll be immune to it. See, there's virtually no one standing to pull down the strongholds of the shame and the moral decay, so it goes unabated, and then the masquerade of this false image of Christ continues in the church world. So from the platforms, these people in charge, they speak in great swelling words of emptiness, and they promise people peace and security while everybody remains a slave to their depravity through a thousand different forms, whether it's you know through the entertainment industry, the religious industry, political industry, it doesn't make any difference. They're slaves to whom they obey. See, it's, it's as though the vast majority of mankind has forgotten how to do what's right in the sight of God, and that's a result of the preaching of this image, this wide road Christianity that they've been telling everybody they're morally depraved and they can't do what's right. So the political leaders, they manipulate people for personal gain so they can rise to uh, greater, greater forms of authority and influence. But the Christian and religious pundits, they merchandise people's souls. They're, like, they're, the, they're the charlatans and the wolves that keep them in their state of delusion. Like 2 Timothy 3.13 says, deceiving and being deceived. You know, the evil men and imposters growing worse and worse. But see, they don't consider themselves imposters and evil men. See, they consider the, the people like Piper and John MacArthur and, and even the people of the past, A.W. Tozer and, and all these other teachers, they quote them and they love their books and the things that they did. But these guys are all part of the system of error. So even though they might have said something good about a few things, the underscored with the inability angle that man's not able to obey God. But see, you have to be discerning to be able to understand that. So these people then, they all operate from their high places. And they're impervious to the cries of us that are standing out at the gates and warning everyone of their impending doom unless they turn and repent. But, you know, in the mainstream... The wide road to destruction, like Matthew 7.14 talks about, it's into the mouth of the dragon. Singing the praises to the false image of Jesus as an alternative to their obedience or some other demagogue that they has universal appeal. So in this mess, then, it's up to the few of us out here to stand the gap against this onslaught and this flood of iniquity because no one from the inside is going to do it. No one has been seen that over 30 to 40 years of experience with this. It's not going to happen, folks. You might have one wolf exposing another wolf, like some wolves might expose Rick Warren wolf, but yet he's still preaching the guy that is exposing Warren or Billy Graham or some, some other guy is still preaching that you get saved in your sins and that deeds don't matter in repentance. So what's the difference unless you come with the me basic message of repentance and faith proven by deeds. See, the pulpits are silent in the face of the filth and the degradation of our society. 
They all argue in favor of sin with a million different excuses that we've been over a hundred times. See, the last bastion of decency on the earth was supposed to be the church of Jesus Christ, the ecclesia, those that are standing as the light on the hill, the salt of the earth. There the was the last bastion, but they've turned into a den of thieves. Just like the prophets have said, like Jesus himself have said. And in Jeremiah 7, verses 8 through 10, he says, But see, behold, you trust in the lying words that cannot profit. That's what you do in the churches. You steal and you murder and you commit adultery and you swear falsely and you worship your false gods. It says burn incense to Baal, but it's the same as you worshiping your idols of entertainment and, and lust and all the rest of it. You walk after your other gods, your other interests in the world whom you did not know, and then you come and you stand before me in my house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered from all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, says the Lord. See, that speaks to this present generation big time. They trust in the lying words of their mighty men in the pulpits, in the mighty pundits of the past, all the way back to Augustine, the biggest heretic of all time. And they commit adultery, and they lie, and they steal, and they lust, and go after the things of the world, and the filthiness on the internet, and all the rest of it, and they wallow in these things, posting it all over the place, all over the internet, how they're saved in their sins. We are delivered from these abominations, Jeremiah said. What do you say? There is no condemnation for us, because we're dead to the law. We have a license to iniquity. So they all argue in favor of sin. Even so, oh no, we don't argue in favor of sin, the preacher will say. But you preach a doctrine that says people are saved in their sins. So they continue in them. So you've turned it into a house, into a den of thieves. You know, in 2 second, in, uh, second Kings 22, we see Josiah. One of the few kings that tore down the high places and burn the altars of shame in his time. The scripture declares that there was none like him before and none like him after. And even that didn't invert the Lord's judgment if you read chapter 22 and 23 of Second Kings. See, but we don't have the leaders in our society with the guts enough to stand against this and silence the voices of the false prophets in the wolves and sheep's clothing that are all over the place. Because they're all just one big happy family believing in the basic Jesus. Believing in the, the image. See, the image of the beast is the image, the false image that comes alive there in Revelation 13 that they've breathed life into by telling everybody about moral depravity and substitution and he did it all for you in advance and, and all that other stuff. That's what's happening. So, the, see, this image has to be brought to the dust. Just like Josiah brought everything to the dust and eliminated it from the land and scrubbed it clean and then made a new covenant with the Lord to obey with all his heart and mind, soul and strength as the scripture says you must do. See, so the solid foundation of Christ has to be restored that those who name his name depart from iniquity, not wallow in it, not be the wretched man and the chief sinner and all that other nonsense that you're taught 24 hours a day. See, we stand aloof at the gates in the spirit of Jeremiah and our hearts burn within just like him and our eyes weep for this generation. And with the fire of indignation in our hearts, we proclaim the Lord's judgments and they call us evil judges and they call us Beelzebub and they condemn us in every manner possible. But we face the same thing as all the messengers of God have faced in the past. If we're to proclaim this message, that you have to come out of here, that this woman riding the scarlet beast is the present day church system and all its perverted forms, then we'll suffer the same consequences that everyone else did that proclaimed this message. See, the Lord Christ come out of her, her destruction is going to be great in Revelation 18. You don't share in her plagues. You see, don't think that the system is the Catholic Church or this perverted church over in the Middle East or the Orthodox this or that. No, it's the whole entire system that is into the mouth of the dragon now. 
It says he deceives the whole earth. How does he do that? If not through an army of false prophets preaching the same message that you're saved in your sins. Nobody's crying out against that on any great extent on the platforms except those of us crying at the gates here. And we're essentially unheard by the masses. See, those that, if you're going to share in the plagues, you're going to suffer the pangs of hell for eternity. You know, with, with people in the system that are casting darts and dispersions at the truth, what they're doing is they're standing with the likes of the political and religious filth that is presiding over this mess. See, you side with the devil himself is what you're doing. When you side with these preachers that aren't preaching that you must come out of your sins before you can find mercy with God. See, you're clinging to their twisted words as wolves in sheep's clothing while they mimic their platitudes intended to keep you in the trance that you're in. See, they calculate and they premeditate every single thing that they do in their craftiness of deceit so they can keep a veil over their hearts and over yours. Remember 2 Timothy 3.13? Deceiving and being deceived. In other words, deceiving themselves and others by what they do. That's what he's talking about there. 